Well, hello everyone, this is Evangelist Joel Torres. Uh, well, as you can hear, uh, this presentation is going to be in audio format. Uh, I apologize for not having the time to tape the program and getting on the set to do everything. But it's just due to my schedule and I'm getting ready to begin to work with another ministry uh, with their uh, telethon uh, for the next 10 days. and. Uh, so that's why I'm doing this in this format right now. But I will uh, take this uh, on set uh, as soon as my schedule uh, calms down a bit, <clears throat> and I will do that. In any case, we're going to be looking at Luke 11, and this is regarding the Lord's Prayer. And uh, I'm calling this the Kingdom Draws Near. And so, you know, um, what we're about to see and what Jesus is about to teach this prayer to his disciples is um, a foresight of what is and what is to come. And so he, uh, let's go ahead and start, well, let's start with verse 1. <clears throat> and it says then, it says this, Then he was praying in a certain place, and when he stopped, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us daily our bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone else who is indebted to us, who has offended us or done us wrong. And bring us not into temptation, but rescue us from evil. Now we're going to continue and we're going to uh, see uh, the three categories of what we've been talking about. Now I'm talking about the God reality, the God initiative, and the God uh, provisions. So let's start. First of all, we see that Jesus is telling them that you now have communication with God the Father and that God the Father um, will now uh, reestablish communication with man uh, because of what Adam did and fell in sin it separated us from God but because of Christ and because they had Christ with them and that uh, and they uh, believed in him and had faith in him they now had access to God himself because of Christ and so in any case now we see that God's the kingdom of God is about to be um, reinstated back here on earth, and it's going. To, and through Christ, we uh, the authority that Christ will release to His disciples is now available for them because they also now have communication with God. So there's a place of reconciliation taking place. And so, what this prayer is showing us that the, God is about to reveal Himself to man once again just as he had revealed himself to Adam and so we now have a relationship restored and so now Jesus is showing them uh, that heaven is approaching and that God is reinstating his presence with man one more time <clears throat> and that everything that he had directed Adam to do is now being reinstated uh, and and the authority of taking dominion and so you know when we think about that we think about the Garden of Eden you know let's remember the Garden of Eden wasn't covered the whole earth it was a patch of real estate that God had planted for Adam to continue the work and to expand that garden and we know that because when he fell into sin him and Eve they were kicked out of the garden so uh, so in any case that garden was designed for Adam to continue the work and to finish what God had started. And God had given him through the power of his glory to, uh, to have to lord over and to have a kingdom governorship uh, expanding the kingdom here on earth. And so now, uh, through the teachings of Jesus and the disciples learning, they're learning uh, now a prayer that is showing them uh, God's perfect will and so now the glory of God is, uh, is showing as through this prayer showing us that the glory of God is, is to be upon man one more time 
and not only that, that we began to, uh, we were able to have the likeness. Remember, we learned about the like, likeness of God. Uh, God is reestablishing that likeness, is reestablishing the image that we were created in. And not only that, but created also in the glory that who He is. And so now we are getting uh, the uh, kingdom DNA of who uh, that makes up God. <laughs> and so how do we know that? Well, simply because there's one word in here in verse 2, and it says this, Hallowed be your name. The word Hallowed means sacred, holy, sanctified, blessed, consecrated, and deified. What does that deified mean? It means to make divine, divine nature of God. Remember we learned in Colossians 2, verse 9, that we were, uh, we were also given the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in us so that God could fully express His nature. What? The fullness of His glory once again. And so here Jesus was showing them what was about to be reestablished and what they would be able to have and that they would be able to be in a position of asking God uh, what <clears throat> for instruction or in asking God uh, and listening to God of what the next steps will be by faith and how to have that authority and, and have the authority to take dominion once again. So here it is, God, Jesus, Jesus is saying, hey, the kingdom is going to ascend and the kingdom is going to be reestablished here on earth and you're going to have the authority given by God through me to take dominion, to have kingdom governorship once again as Adam did. And so Jesus is showing them uh, what it is and what is to come. And so we are seeing in this prayer that God is reestablishing and reinstating that authority to all of us. So, amen. And so, not only that, but now we're learning that the glory of God is going to reestablish what? For man to know the God reality, to know the reality of his nature, to know the reality of his perfect will, and know the reality of walking in his presence and in faith. Amen. So uh, here we see the first part of the God reality that's going to take place. The glory of God is going to be revealed and we are going to be operating in that likeness. What that likeness that comes in what? That is sacred, holy, sanctified, blessed, consecrated, and deified. What is uh, is a deity, a DNA, what I call divine nature appointed. We have been given the kingdom DNA, a divine nature appointed to us, with filled with authority to take dominion uh, and take back what belongs to the kingdom of God. Amen. So we see this first part. So what is that uh, that is going to be released? Well, not only the nature of God, the DNA and the God reality, but revelation, so that we are able to walk in the full knowledge of God. That's the first part. And we come in that likeness with great authority. And so, uh, the other part now is, uh, uh, it says, you will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. So the plan that God had with Adam is being reinstated. God has a plan. Remember uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for, uh, for the Lord, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. God is declaring those plans that he had uh, with Adam and, and has with each one of us and declaring them to be fulfilled under that banner of his glory and his presence. Amen. So the God reality is now coming into influition and which has given us revelation. Now, uh, now the plan, the, what, the, what God has originally is now coming here and being reestablished uh, here on earth. Amen. So, uh, so now we see the, God, the initiative, the plan. Now, what? To, uh, to walk in the operation of that kingdom governorship. And so now after that, we see what? The God provision. Give us daily our bread. Amen. So now we see the God provision. So we are getting into uh, God reality, God initiative, and the God provision, which is what? Revelation, operation, and now manifestation. 
and this is what Jesus is teaching his disciples. Look, this is what you pray includes all this. This is what should be included in your prayer. Amen. So that brings uh, uh, the fulfillment and the fullness of God's will in your life to having a uh, kingdom outcome. Amen. And then we go right into, and forgive us of our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And uh, it also bring us not into temptation, but rescue us from evil. Now we see what is to come. What is that salvation, redemption? And so now we see the manifestation of God's perfect will for man and reinstating that relationship, having that communication once again. And so now we see salvation coming into play, redemption to bring us in a place of righteousness so that we are justified to having complete free access to God once again. And access to releasing that what we release here on earth shall be released in heaven and what uh, we bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. Amen. And now God, now Jesus, after he shows them this prayer, now he's going to give them an example of a kingdom attitude that we should have in us when we are pursuing God and pursuing the promises. Now look at this. Now here it is in verse uh, 5 uh, and 6. Look at this. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and will say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine who is on a journey has just come, and I have nothing to put before him. And he from within will answer, Do not disturb me. The door is now closed, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and supply you with anything. I tell you, although he will not get up and supply him anything because he is his friend, Yet because of his shameless persistence and insistence, <laughs> he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Amen. So what Jesus is showing them is a kingdom pursuing attitude, the characteristic how God wants us to pursue him uh, through his word. And so here... Uh, that no matter uh, what seems like impossible is not impossible when you are pursuing uh, the uh, on behalf of the kingdom of God and the promises and blessings that he has for you that nothing can hold you uh, from receiving what he has for you so God wants us to have a pursuant attitude and with him and that you can come to him uh, midnight or any other time to him and uh, that is what Jesus is telling them. Uh, this is the type of kingdom attitude that God wants you to have. If you're going to have authority to lord over what God has given you, then you've got to have a kingdom attitude. A God likeness, the God image, and we have everything that God is in us. Colossians 2.9. Remember, we have been uh, given the, the fullness of Godhead, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, so that He may fully express his nature, what? His glory. And so God uh, wants us to have this pursuant attitude and, and how he wants us to pursue him with all our heart and to have this and be persistent and insistent. Why? Because the kingdom of God is, is, is persistent and, and insistent of taking back what belonged uh, to him. And so uh, the kingdom of God will also be what we are uh, asking for and what we are pursuing, uh, the promises and the blessings of God. Remember, the kingdom of God is going to be also as well persistent and insistent. What? It's going to be relentless. Relentless and how it punches through for your breakthrough. Amen. And that's what Jesus is telling his disciples, that you've got to have this attitude with God because God wants you to pursue him with all your heart and your soul and your might and your spirit. Amen. So that is what Jesus is telling them to be precise, to be specific with your prayer, just like what he's teaching them here so that the fullness of God's will will be done on here on earth. And so we've been talking about an ungodly system 
but the kingdom system is persistent and insistent and that is what he wants us to have so that we have our breakthrough and that we are to be relentless and that's why and we can because what of god's word that says what there's no weapon forged can come against us uh, if God is with us, if God is for us, who can be against us? Uh, we talk about Ephesians 6, and or uh, God's talking about, Jesus is talking about what? Being fully armored, the armor of God. <laughs> so to fight the good fight of faith, we're to have a warrior attitude, a pursuant attitude, just like this person until he got what he needed. Because sometimes we're going to uh, we are, are going what God wants us to do but then there are things that are people and sometimes circumstances that will be like a barrier or be like one that's stubborn to release what belongs to you what you need your breakthrough and God wants us to have be have that pursuing attitude with him and with what we are going after through the power of his glory in the likeness of who he is amen okay why because we have that divine nature appointed to us and so then uh, Jesus goes on and expands on this and says it right here in verse 9 look at what he says so I say to you ask and keep on asking and it shall be given you seek and keep on seeking and you shall find knock and keep on knocking and the door shall be open to you for everyone who asks and keeps on asking receives, and he who seeks and keeps on seeking finds, and him who knocks and keeps on knocking, the door shall be open. Amen. Amen. So now we're seeing what is and is to come in this prayer. And in this prayer gives a glimpse of the type of characteristics uh, or character uh, likeness of God that we need to have and how to pursue him and be insistent and be relentless uh, because we can be relentless because we have the authority and we have the kingdom of God behind us amen praise God so now let's uh, let me in closing let me go to um, Luke chapter 17 verse 20 and here Jesus gives another example of the kingdom coming. Look at this. Uh, it says, verse 20, uh, Luke 17. And it says this, Asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he replied to them by saying, The kingdom of God does not come with signs to be observed or with visible display. Nor will people say, Look, here it is, or see, it is there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among you, surrounding you. Amen. So we are seeing that the glory of God is not only in us, but upon us. The anointing, uh, the empowerment, uh, that anointing through the power of the Holy Spirit, and the kingdom and the glory of God once again, as it covered Adam, now covers us. It surrounds us. When the kingdom of God is coming down, it's about to bring an atmospheric change. And let me tell you, right now, because of the glory of God, and we get this revelation, we will cause a shaking, an atmospheric spiritual change in our world right now. You see, because, you know, uh, the world's talking, the system's talking about change. But they're not going to get it because uh, they're trying to bring it under their own power. But when we come under the kingdom system, the governorship of that kingdom and the authority given to us through Christ Jesus, we can cause an atmospheric change where we live. And what what is before us is subject to change because of God's word. Amen. And that's why I stand on 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. And so, uh, now, this is what Jesus was teaching his disciples. And so I want you to meditate on this word. I want you to just pray. I want you to, what the word says, sila, meditate, chew on it. 
uh, you know, digest it in your spirit. And get the revelation that you need and understand that you're in the, that you have the likeness, you have the DNA, the God DNA, the divine nature appointed. God has divine, has uh, appointed his nature, his likeness, his image in you, and with everything that he is, is in you as well. Colossians 2.9, remember that. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen, so that he may fully express his full nature in us and through us in Jesus name why because the kingdom draws near well that uh, that include that concludes uh, this program thank you so very much for joining me I'm going to once my schedule lets down a bit I will take this on video as well so I'm going to be busy next week and so uh, I'm not sure whether I will have anything next week but I will make sure and give you an update I will need to make a couple announcements and I'll do that in a few days from now. Thank you. God bless. Have a blessed week. Uh, please make sure if you have any prayer requests, uh, uh, send them in at jtouristministries at msn.com. Love to hear from you. God bless. Bye-bye.